Okay, adding complex numbers, subtracting complex numbers, not a big deal. Multiplying complex numbers just requires a little bit of foiling. What about dividing complex numbers? Well, in fact, there's a little bit of, of trickery in here too, which once you see the idea, it's not a big deal, but it does require something. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose I wanted to consider 4 plus i and divide it by 3 plus 5i. Well, you know, to inspire this, let me actually remind you of what this really is. I mean, you have to remember what i is here. So I have 4, and I'll put square root of minus 1, divided by 3 plus 5 square root of minus 1. Aha! Square roots in the bottom. And you may recall that there are some prejudicial people in mathematics just don't like that. So they want to rationalize the denominator. And that would actually require multiplying by a very clever choice of 1. In, in this case, something over itself. And in this particular case, the trick, remember, is to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate is the exact same thing as it was before. The same thing as this number, except this sign is, is changed. So if you multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, what happens is this becomes a good old-fashioned real number, as we'll see, because the inner terms will cancel out. So the trick in dividing complex numbers is going to be to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So how would that look? I would have a 3 minus 5i. That's the conjugate of the bottom. And 3 minus 5i. So it doesn't change the value. So this cancels out, and it's just 1. So it doesn't change the value. Okay. But now what happens when I multiply this through? I have to multiply the tops, and I have to multiply the bottoms. So this is going to be a whole bunch of foiling, like we just talked about, in terms of multiplying complex numbers. So let's take a look at how that would work. Well, I'd have the 4 times the 3, which produces a 12. And then my inside term produces the complex number 3i. You may start doing this all in one step, but I'm not going to do it right now. And then this produces the outsides, produce the complex number of minus 20i. And then the last times the last. Now I'm going to do this in one fell swoop. It looks like minus 5i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1. So I actually see minus 5 times negative 1, which is a plus 5. So that takes care of the, the top. What about the bottom? The bottom I see uh, 3 times 3, which is 9. Inside term is 15i. The outside term, notice, is minus 15i. So 15i minus 15i, they cancel. That was the whole point of this, by the way. And the last times the last is a minus 5i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1. So I see a minus 5 times minus 1, which is a plus 5. Notice the denominator now is a real number. That was the whole point of this exercise, is to divide this into it and have no i's in here. So I multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. Let's now reduce this a little bit. If we can simplify it, put it together. The real parts, that produce a 17. The imaginary parts, minus 20i plus 3i, is like a minus uh, 17i. Divided by, and then, let's see, now let's make sure I did that correctly, though. Let's see. So I've got 17, and then if I take uh, 20 and I subtract 3, let's see what happens here. Now, there's a, there's a problem. There's a problem. Let's see if we can figure it out here. So 9. Oh, oh, no, there's no problem here. There's no problem here. But look, look what I wrote here. Oh, in fact, you might have seen this even earlier on. Oh, boy. You know, making mistakes is fine, but you've got to always be careful. I took this times this, and I talked through it, and I said, that this is minus 25 times i squared. I think I said 5, minus 5. I forgot to multiply this by this. Sorry about that. This is wrong. This is completely wrong. You know what I'm going to do, in fact? I'm so embarrassed by this. I don't want you to even look at that anymore. So let's just cover it up. I don't even want to patch that up. I just want you to not even think about it, because that was wrong. It shouldn't have been 5. It should be 25, because it's this times this, which is a minus 25i squared, which is plus 25. Boy. But it's good for you to see that everyone makes mistakes, especially me, especially me. Okay, and I think the top, though, is fine. And then if I take 9 and I add 25, um, I get something like 34. And, uh, oh, I can factor a 17 out of the top. And I'm left with 1 minus i divided by 34. And look, 34, I can cancel the 17 and the 34. 
And that leaves me with i 1 minus i over 2, which I could write this way. Some people like to write these things this way. Because then you can see the real part is a half, and the imaginary part is minus a half. So you could want to break up that fraction and, and write it that way. OK, let's, um, let's try another one so you can get the hang of this. In fact, let me, uh, let me let you try this one. 6, uh, six plus i divided by i. Why don't you do that division, see what you can get. Remember, the trick is to multiply by the conjugate. Wonder what the conjugate would look like uh, here. <laughs> OK, let me try it. 